the biggest myths about weight loss that you've ever been told. First of all, let's remember one of my most famous lines. Weight off fast will never last. Weight off slow, you're good to go. Now, what do I mean by that? It turns out that over 90% of people who go on a quick weight loss diet regain not only that weight, but actually more weight than when they started. Well over 90%. One of the things that gets talked about repeatedly is the use of a low-carb diet to lose weight, a no-fat diet to lose weight, an intermittent fasting diet to lose weight, a keto diet to lose weight. And you'll see a study of remarkable changes in a month, six weeks, huge amount of individual weight loss. And while all of that is true, when studies have been designed to compare over a period of time these various eating programs, it's almost like the tortoise and the hare. By that I mean, for instance, the Atkins diet, a low carbohydrate, keto, high protein diet, if you will, versus a normal carbohydrate or a low fat diet. In fact, the Atkins-like diet, TERS actually lost more weight more quickly than the other two diet groups. But when these diet groups were followed over a six month and then a year period, lo and behold, what happened was that the people who rapidly lost weight caught up with the slower losing weight group. And by the end of a year, there actually was little to any difference in any of the groups. And that's because things that are going to really require you to radically change your behavior are usually not sustainable over a longer period of time. And one of the things that I've spent my career uh, teaching people in my practice is that I've got to find, they've got to find, a lifestyle that they can live with, literally and figuratively. And that lifestyle may be very different depending on the individual. But beware of rapid weight loss schemes. Uh, it just is one of the greatest myths uh, out there. Now, uh, when I first lost all my weight, uh, over 25 years ago now, uh, I joined a study uh, coming out of the NIH looking at people who had successful long-term weight loss. And again, that's a very small percentage of people who lose weight. It's only about 5% of people who have sustained weight loss over many years after being obese. And the remarkable finding was it really didn't matter what their eventual diet became, but the thing that was consistent across all the groups that sustained weight loss was that they had a sustained exercise program. And interestingly enough, it didn't really matter what that exercise program was, but it was an exercise program that they stuck with. And I think, again, so much of what I teach my patients is in exercise, number one, you've got to find something you enjoy doing. It's not something that you, oh my gosh, I've got to go do this because that's how I'm going to keep the weight off. Again, you've got to find something sustainable and something sustainable almost always invo involves something that you enjoy. So you don't have to have a gym membership. And for the last two years, 
most people's gym memberships were useless because we couldn't go use a gym. You don't have to start lifting heavy weights. You don't have to do weight lifting. You don't have to run a mile every day. But all of these are great options. In fact, it really doesn't matter in the scheme of things what you do as long as you're moving your body. Now, there's some really good take-home points. For instance, um, I just counseled one of my patients yesterday who, uh, it's now summer, they live in a, in a community where summer is beautiful, and this particular individual through the winter has developed uh, really bad insulin resistance. Uh, he's now metabolically inflexible, He's now teetering on diabetes. And one of the things that we noticed about his behavior through the winter was he used to, he used to exercise every day. He used to have a personal trainer. And because of COVID, uh, he no longer was using a personal trainer. Uh, and that personal trainer would work him uh, three days a week. And he still does not want to use his personal trainer for, for COVID reasons, and that's okay. But we have to get him moving, and they happen to have a dog. And so my prescription, as it is for many people, is uh, this individual now has to walk his dog 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening. And interestingly enough, he has to walk the dog after not only the dog's dinner, but his dinner. And why? Because years ago, a very simple study was done looking at people who exercised 10 minutes before dinner versus exercised 10 minutes after dinner. And they found the group that exercised after dinner actually lost weight whereas the group that exercised before dinner didn't. And I won't go into the evolutionary complexities of it, but the point of all of this is, take a walk after dinner if you do nothing else. I spend a lot of time in Europe, and European society in general walks after dinner. It's a part of the nightly ritual of taking a stroll. And using that time, you will not store the calories that you ate as dinner as fat because your body assumes that you're off moving to the next hunting ground and the last thing you want to do is take those calories and store them as fat. So we also know as a general rule that big city dwellers are much thinner than suburban dwellers because they walk much more distances coming from the subway or coming from a train station, walking to and fro their offices, walking to and fro lunch. Very different than suburbanites who, as most of us know, were never designed for walking. So, uh, you know, just start moving. As I mentioned many, many times before, People in the blue zones in general live in hilly communities. And Loma Linda, where you know, I was a professor for much of my career, means beautiful hill. And walking up and down against gravity is one of the best ways to actually build muscle groups. You may recall in one of my books, I mentioned the famous Austrian study, where they brought people to a mountain, and they divided the people into two groups. One group got to ride the cable car up to the top of the mountain and walk down. The other group had to hike to the top of the mountain and ride the cable car down. Now, needless to say, you would want to be selected, you'd think, as the group who rode up and walked down. And the researchers were convinced that, in fact, when they looked at muscle mass and calorie expenditure, that the group that rode up and walked down was going to be way behind the group that walked up and rode down. 
but what they found shocked them, but it shouldn't have. Walking against gravity uphill takes a lot of effort, takes a, builds a lot of muscle, but walking down against gravity requires huge muscles as a braking effect. And the take home of the, of the study was it really didn't matter whether you rode up and walked down or walked up and rode down, the effect was equal. So how do you put that into play? Well, one of the easiest ways, if you happen to work in a building with an elevator, then take the elevator up and walk down. Or conversely, walk up and take the elevator down. You'll get a major benefit either way. And quite frankly, most people will choose to take the elevator up and walk down but you'll still get a big benefit. So the point of all this is, wait off fast will never last, wait off slow, you're good to go, and to keep the weight off, you almost invariably have to find an exercise program that you can live with. And that's the secret, and that's one of the biggest myths that we need to bust, that these rapid weight loss programs are everything they're cut out to be, they're not. You're definitely gonna wanna see this one. Extra virgin olive oil helps you lose weight. Very good studies comparing two groups of people where one group got extra virgin olive oil, the other group didn't, the group that got the olive oil lost two to three kilograms more than the group that didn't get it.